On to our next story, an Israeli court has rejected a request to strip the controversial Israeli spyware firm NSO Group of its export license. In turn, uh, the International Human Rights Group, uh, Amnesty International, has sued NSO over the suspected use of technology to target journalists and dissidents worldwide. The Tel Aviv District Court ruled that Amnesty's lawyers did not provide sufficient evidence to prove their claim that the spyware company tried to snoop on human rights activists by trying to hack his cell phone. The court uh, determined that there was no evidence at all for uh, any attempt to uh, abuse the system of NSO uh, or to intercept even uh, the phone of uh, Amnesty's uh, activist. There was no evidence for this. There was no evidence that the system of NSO was involved in any way in such uh, interception. Um, actually, uh, Amnesty uh, or the petitioners um, who belong to uh, the management of uh, Amnesty Israel uh, did not provide um, any uh, evidence even regarding the identity of such a person that uh, his phone was intercepted. Um, so we, we don't know even that it, it really happened. Uh, so the court uh, denied uh, naturally, I think, uh, uh, the, the petition. However, Amnesty International alleges that courts uh, in Israel always tend to safeguard defense ministry's interest. Amnesty International is disappointed, yes, but not surprised by the court's ruling. Uh, it's been a long-standing tradition for the Israeli courts to be a rubber stamp for the Israeli Ministry of Defense, uh, their impunity for Israeli companies that are accomplices for violation of human rights and uh, murderous regimes. We are, uh, we are hopeful that we will be able to, to convince people to join our uh, call for an amendment in the Israeli law that will allow us to, to um, prevent such, situ such situations in the future. The company has been accused of selling its surveillance software to repressive governments that use it against dissidents. The company built Pegasus, a highly invasive tool that can reportedly switch on a target's cell phone, camera and microphone and access data on it, effectively turning the phone into a pocket spy. The NSO Group has always maintained its innocence, insisting that its spyware is purchased by government clients for the purpose of tracking terrorists and criminals, and that it has no independent knowledge of how those clients use its spyware. Not so long ago, WhatsApp filed a lawsuit against Israeli spyware company, accusing NSO of being deeply involved in carrying out mobile phone hacks of 1,400 of its users including senior government officials, journalists, and human rights activists. In fact, similar allegations have been made against the firm's role in hacking phones and other devices, software created by the Israeli spyware firm. It was used to hack the phone of a member of Jamal Khashoggi's inner circle, which allowed Saudi security officials to track him.